Well, I haven't been doing very many 60 Symbols videos because obviously I don't live in Nottingham anymore. We are in Sydney, Australia, and after my contract in Nottingham was over, I got a job, a postdoctoral position here in Sydney. The Southern Hemisphere sees some stars different than what the Northern Hemisphere can see. So if we use my, my Australian prop here, this is going to be the Earth, and we're going to pretend that this is the Sun. So the Earth goes around the Sun, and the Earth also rotates. So if you consider the head is the Northern Hemisphere and the body is the Southern Hemisphere, as it rotates and it moves around the Sun, this side can only see things that are up here, and the body can only see things that are down here. So some things we can see from both hemispheres, like Orion and certain constellations, but certain things you can only see from the north, like the North Celestial Pole, and from the south there are things that you can only see there, like uh, the Southern Cross is probably the most famous constellation in the Southern Hemisphere. We have all the really, really great nebulae. Um, the Northern Hemisphere has some good ones as well. Um, the Northern Hemisphere has, the, has fantastic galaxies. We have a few notable ones, but um, I think the, our part of the galaxy, which is visible here directly overhead, is um, just fantastic to look at. Just even naked eye of night time, you can, um, you can see all the dust lanes and, and uh, or the, just the bright lights of, of all the billions and billions of stars. So maybe we are fortunate, um, but I couldn't call it one way or the other. So one of the highlights of the Southern Hemisphere is definitely the Crux, is the official constellation. Um, it's the smallest of the official 88 constellations, and it also makes up the Southern, the Southern Cross. So the Southern Cross is the Crux, and then there's a couple other stars that are attached to it called the Pointers. One of the Pointers is Alpha Centaurus, which is actually the nearest star to the Earth. So it's, if you look at it through a telescope, it looks like a little double star. Um, and so that little group are the closest stars that we have to the Earth and the Sun. So Alpha Centauri is a big bright one, but it's got, it thinks, we think it's actually a triple system. And one of those stars is Proxima Centauri, and that's just a little bit closer than Alpha Centauri. Right, well the Southern Cross is so famous in the Southern Hemisphere that it's on flags. So it's actually on five national flags, including Australia. But a lot of people do come here to Australia to see the Southern skies. and. I guess it's because we have a couple of really close galaxies, Magellanic Clouds, that are really, really close by to our galaxy, so people want to see that, and there's nebulae within that, and there are the biggest cluster of visible in the sky is down here, there's um, Amiga Centauri, so maybe we do have a bit of an unfair advantage. So another thing about the Southern Cross, if you can usually see it from inside of the city, but when you go out of the city, um, you can see that, and then as your eyes start to adjust, you start to see more and more stars, and the Milky Way going across just behind the Southern Cross. And what you notice is you start to see more and more stars, that there's, there's one dark patch just to the south of the, the Southern Cross where there's decidedly few, few stars there. So it's actually a dark nebula. It's one of the few dark nebula that we know. Um, the head, Horsehead Nebula in Orion is the other the other well-known one. But this is actually, it makes up the head of one of the, the most well-known indigenous constellations. So it's the head of what's called the emu. I was quickly told it's not pronounced emu, it's emu. Um, <laughs> so the emu is this big bird that goes all the way across the Milky Way in the sky. And this dark nebula, the Colsac Nebula, makes the head of this. So I, it just fascinates me that this culture actually has a story about the lack of, of stars in this region of the sky. So my other favorite things in the south are actually galaxies, the, the large and small Magellanic Clouds, which you can't see from the north, and it's such a shame because they're just brilliant. Oh, they're, they're fantastic to observe. Um, they've got, um, well, the large Magellanic Cloud has um, uh, the Tarantula Nebula in there. So that's a really awesome thing to go and have a look at. Lots and lots of dust and, and swirling clouds and. Um, quite a few stars with it contained within that. Um, you can see the, the big Milky Way shooting across the sky and then there are these two patches, kind of fuzzy clouds they almost look like. Um, and one's big and one's small, they're both dwarf irregular galaxies. Um, and they're, they make up part of the local group around, around like our galaxy and they've definitely influenced some of the structure of our galaxy because they're just that close. But the fact that you can see them in the sky and they're, they're really big, oh, it's great. The small Magellanic Cloud has Equally has some interesting targets to look at. Uh, some small nebulae there, NGC 346, which is a fantastic looking uh, nebula. And it also has 47 Tacana, re really, really close by, which is a, a fantastic globular cluster to, to observe. So yeah, even visually, these things are fantastic. 
when I first came to the Southern Hemisphere, it almost felt like it was an entirely new universe because there's, there's so much that isn't in my intuition from growing up. You know, Orion is all of a sudden upside down, which kind of makes me feel a little dizzy <laughs> to some degree, but it's just like I'm exploring an entirely new universe down here.